and I have six o'clock. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, Dr. Robinson, again, I just want to thank you for taking the time to um, meet with us tonight to talk to us about women's health. Um, I want to welcome everyone who is joining us either on Zoom or on, on live stream. Um, what we're going to try to do tonight at the uh, very end, maybe 10, 15 minutes prior to the end of um, Ms. Rob Dr. Robin's presentation, then we're going to um, ask, you can ask your questions. You can either put them in a the chat or you can raise your hand either way. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, read the questions and so she can go ahead and answer them. But Dr. Robbins, the floor is all yours. Oh, thank you. Um, uh, good evening, everyone. I'm so grateful for this privilege and opportunity to talk to you about women, women's health. I just want to acknowledge your pastor, Bishop Brailsforth, and also your first lady. And hopefully um, throughout through this session, you'll get some information about uh, women's health. Now, I elected to center this talk around what I call our 10 health tips, aligning your body, soul, and spirit. So the first health tip is guard your heart. The Bible says, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are spring the issues of life. Now, these two pictures depict a normal blood vessel and one that has been affected by atherosclerosis or hardening of the arteries. As we know, cardiovascular disease is the number one killer in our, na in our nation and heart disease is prevalent amongst women, especially African-American women. So you can see on the right side, all of how the lumen or the middle part of that artery is, is clogged with debris. That represents an atherosclerotic vessel, and that is what leads to heart disease. Now, what are cardiovascular diseases? First of all, there's coronary heart disease or diseases of the arteries in the heart. It can lead to a heart attack, chest pain, congestive heart failure, and arrhythmia or sudden death. Next is cerebrovascular disease or strokes or transient ischemic attacks or many strokes. There's peripheral vascular disease. The medical term for um, leg cramping is intermittent claudication. All of us know uh, people who have had severe peripheral vascular disease, which resulted in the loss of a limb, from the limb being amputated. And then hypertension or high blood pressure is also considered to be a cardiovascular disease. Normal blood pressure is less than 140 over 90. One third of African Americans have high blood pressure. So undoubtedly someone under the sound of my voice now is being treated for high blood pressure. Now, uh, women in cardiovascular disease are under, for women, cardiovascular disease is an underrecognized risk. Many believe that heart disease is a man's disease, but heart disease is also the leading cause of death in American women. Men and women both experience chest pain as the most common warning sign for heart attacks. Women, however, are more likely to have other atypical signs. Atypical signs may be dizziness, fatigue, abdominal pain, uh, jaw pain, uh, shoulder pain, and many believe that heart disease can be diagnosed in, in men and women using the same diagnostic test. The standard treadmill test that we use where you exercise on the treadmill, however, uh, are less, is less reliable in women. So in order to diagnose heart disease, you may have to go to other means. You may have to do a stress echogram in which they inject dye and have you exercise on the treadmill or other tests. Now, compared with Caucasian women, African-American and Mexican-American women have higher incidences of high blood pressure, diabetes, and increased BMI. BMI is the body mass index. And if it is over 30, then you are considered to be obese. Now, African-American women have higher death rates from cardiovascular disease rather than white women. 
Now, these are risk factors for heart disease that you can't not change. Your age, uh, gender, family history of heart disease, or prior history of heart disease. Family history of heart disease is considered significant if a male member in your family had a heart attack before age 45, or a woman, a female member with a heart, uh, with a heart attack at age of 55. So these are risk factors that you cannot change. They're known as non-modifiable risk factors. Now, on this slide, it shows non-modifiable risk factors as well as modifiable risk factors. We mentioned obesity. Obesity is something that can be modified. Poor eating habits can be modified. Poor eating habits sometimes lead to obesity. Um, also, lack of exercise and inactivity can be modified. And to be sedentary, to have a sedentary lifestyle is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease. So looking at you know, these, we can see that there are things that we can do in order to reduce our risk of cardiovascular uh, disease. Now, second tip, maintain a normal body weight. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, lay aside every weight and let us run with endurance, the race that is set before us. I alluded to um, the BMI earlier. And if you look at this chart, it shows the BMI at the top. And, and a normal BMI is, is less than, is 24 or less. To be overweight is between 25 and, nine, and 29. And obesity is over age 30. Now the BMI is a ratio of your weight and height squared. So on the, there are some charts that you can actually, sometimes we see a little wheel and you can dial what your um, BMI is. But if you look here, if you are five feet and you weigh a hundred and I don't have a pointer, but if you're 60 inches tall and you weigh 174 pounds, then your BMI is 34. So you're, you are in the obese range. You are in the obese range. Whereas if you're five feet tall and you weigh 118 pounds, then your BMI is normal at 23. So your body weight <clears throat> is very important. And those who are obese have a higher incidence of what we call our comorbid conditions. That is diabetes, and heart disease. So exercise and keeping, and I'll get to exercise, but maintaining a normal body weight is, is very important to your health. Tip number three, examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. You need to get regular health screenings. I know a lot of people are reluctant to come to the hospital. I work at Henry Ford Hospital or healthcare facilities for fear of, of COVID. We have now started doing a lot of virtual visits, uh, telephone visits or video visits to accommodate you, but you still need to get your regular health screenings. Now, this is a chart that illustrates by age what screening tests you should have as a woman. Um, you should have an annual health risk assessment and starting at age 18, there's some, there's some uh, literature now that says that an annual physical exam may be somewhat obsolete, but certainly at age, I would say starting at age 40 and above, you need to get an annual okay. checkup. Uh, I apologize, could you speak up? Should I continue? Hello? Hello? You, can, you can continue. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Pelvic and pap exam every three years with normal result results. 
But if you get a pelvic and a pap exam and you're screened for HPV, human papilloma virus, that interval is extended out to five years. And as you know, after age 65, it's not necessary to get a pelvic or a pap exam unless there is some abnormality. Now, chlamydia screening, these are sexually transmitted diseases for sexually active women 25 years and younger, and those over 26 years at high risk. But now, when we do pelvic and perhaps in general, we do screen for STI, sexually transmitted diseases, almost automatically. Just like now, you notice when you go to get blood drawn, it's universal precautions, everybody wears gloves. And we did that even before COVID. Mammograms, annual um, breast exam, mammogram should start, the new literature suggests age 50 and above and to stop at age 75. But I still counsel my patients starting at age 40 as to whether or not they'd like to get a mammogram. The issue with doing a mammogram in a younger woman is that the breast tissue has a tendency to be dense and you may get false positive mammograms. Now, this screening for the mammogram is mitigated if there is a family history of breast cancer. So in some instances, we may start below age 40. And <clears throat> and between 40 and 50, the, there are some schools who say the mammogram can be done every other year as opposed to every year. I think at age 40, you need to have a dialogue with your physician to discuss it. Now, cholesterol and lipid screening should be done every five years as or as directed by your um, physician. That's a lipid profile that checks your total cholesterol, LDL, HDL, triglycerides, and so on. To continue, a colonoscopy should be done at age 50. A colonoscopy is a screening test for colorectal cancer, but these guidelines are about to change for African Americans. They're going to lower, and I think in general, they're going to lower their age down to 45. We all know uh, the tragic story of Chadwick Boseman, the star of um, uh, the Black Panther, who died in his 40s because of uh, colon cancer. So, we recommend a colonoscopy every 10 years or every five years if you have polyps identified. And the FOBT is fecal, a blood, a fecal occult blood testing. So for those who do not want to have a colonoscopy, I'm sure you've seen the commercials, the Colagard commercials, where you can mail you know, a, a sample of your um, stool back to Colagard, and that also suffices for uh, screening for colorectal cancer. But now if the Colagard specimen is positive, then you're going to need a colonoscopy. So I tell my patients, um, I, you know, I prefer you get a colonoscopy, but for some people it's not aesthetically pleasing. But colorectal cancer screening is also important. And um, blood pressure, when you go to the doctor, they check your blood pressure uh, when you get a checkup. So it, the screening says every two years, but when you go to get a physical, they're gonna check your blood pressure. Now, diabetes, this says diabetes screening, but there really is no guideline for screening for diabetes. Um, usually when you go to the doctor, you get a blood glucose test done along with the other test. And we usually do a fasting glucose or a glycated hemoglobin. Now, if you are overweight, if you are obese, the doctor will, will do a fasting glucose, probably most likely a glycated hemoglobin. If you have a family history of diabetes, then the doctor will likely do a glycated hemoglobin to assess for the possibility of um, diabetes. The HPV, I already uh, uh, mentioned, and just let me say that we're doing HPV vaccinations in adolescents, even as young as nine, and they extended the age uh, for men up to the early 40s. But HPV vaccination to protect against human papillomavirus, which is a precursor for 
uh, uterine cancer. Now, fourth tip, exercise con consistently. For bodily exercise profits a little, but godliness is profitable for all things, having promise of life that is now, that now is and of what is to come. Now, this is a chart to show the benefits of exercise. It decreases your cardiovascular mortality. It increases coronary artery disease. It can decrease blood pressure. Uh, it can decrease anxiety and depression. Been some studies have shown that it decreases uh, dementia. It increases cognitive function, decreases the risk of stroke. It decreases weight decreases the incidence of diabetes or helps your diabetes to be better controlled. The bad cholesterol, the LDL, it decreases and it increases the good cholesterol, the HDL. It also <clears throat> will decrease the incidence of osteoporosis, a thinning of the bones, decrease your fall risk and decrease disability. Nowadays, many of us have um, uh, fitness, um, Fitness watches, I have a Fitbit. Um, there's uh, the Apple Watch. Um, most phones, smartphones have an app that you can um, um, access to, to track your exercise. Now, you can walk your way to health, but let me say before you start walking, you need to check with your doctor to make sure you're okay to walk especially if you're over 40. Now, walking only 30 minutes a day will do these things. It alleviates depression and fatigue. It increases attention and decision-making, especially if you do have a, a fitness tracker and you set goals for yourself. You know, you're, watch, you know, you're checking your watch uh, or you have a pace. Some of us like to use, um, I can't think of her name, but she does a lot of the fitness tapes with walking and you can, you know, um, choose what speed, you know, the music tempo is increased. And exercise, walking, um, 30 minutes a day limits chronic diseases. As I said, it will decrease the incidence of diabetes. It um, reduces the risk of Alzheimer's. It can improve your blood pressure by five points. And that might be the difference between you taking a blood pressure pill and not. It lowers your risk of heart disease, as I said. It can reduce lower back pain. It can limit the risk of colon cancer. It improves fitness. It strengthens your legs, your quads, your hips and hamstrings. It keeps your weight in check and it works your arm muscles. Now, we gain weight because um, calories in are less than calories out. So when you exercise, you burn calories. So that helps to keep your weight in check. Now, tip number five, feed yourself well. I have not departed from the commandments of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. We know spiritually that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And you've heard the expression, the adage, you are what you eat. Now, this picture shows a well-balanced diet. It shows a piece of salmon that has omega-3, healthy fats. It shows grains, which are healthy. Um, it shows um, oats, which are healthy. It shows tomatoes, um, which have lycopenes. It shows, it reveals fresh fruit and it shows milk. And milk, it should be low fat milk or it could be almond milk. It could be uh, oat milk. A lot of African-Americans are lactose intolerant, so you may not be able to digest milk products. Okay, now, this is a chart of um, colored vegetables and each of, and fruit, each of these colors represent an antioxidant that is in each of these fruits and vegetables. When you eat, your, <clears throat> your plate should look like a rainbow. It should be full of color. 
And each of these colors represents a particular antioxidant. And the antioxidants reduce free radicals that can cause cancer. So the green vegetables, you see all of these nice green vegetables, the white vegetables, red vegetables, yellow vegetables, and the purple and blue vegetables. Now, the red vegetables have lycopenes, and you see watermelons and tomatoes, strawberries, and the other, ve the white vegetables, I think it's a, um, and acillin, it starts with a, with an A. And then the other green vegetables, and there are so many green vegetables that we can choose from. And your blue and purple vegetables, blackberries, blueberries, eggplants, elderberries. Elderberries are said to help um, simulate our immune system. And a lot of uh, people are now using elderberry um, products, especially with COVID-19. Now, this is another chart that, that also talks about the flavons and flavonoids flavonoids that are in different food products. The anthocyanins are what is in the, the blue and purple vegetables, isoflavones in the green vegetables. So this is just to show you um, how these are antioxidants. So when our moms told us when we were growing up to eat our vegetables, they were right on it. Now, tip number six, casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tip number six is reduce stress. Now, who under the sound of my voice is not under stress? Did anybody raise their hand? <laughs> Put their hand up, Lady Brailsford. <laughs> All of us are under stress. I am under complete stress. <laughs> 24-7. I know that's right. When you're a first lady, when you're a wife, when you're a mother, you, you have a job. When you work for the federal government and finance. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> God, yes. I'm, I'm having a battle with the IRS. For some reason, my tax return didn't get processed properly so they're telling me you know to call back and 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 all of that so i just said lord i'm giving it to you at least exactly. they have my return at least they got it but i you know so i'm under stress too but now okay how to stress less and i'm gonna just take a, a few minutes for you all to look at this and to see um you know there's <laughs> i got tickled when it said the avoid side, okay? Because I think sometimes that's where I dwell on the avoid side, you know, stressful people, stressing over uh, little things, procrastinating, uh, over commitment, trying to be perfect, all right? Pessimism, you know, death and life are in the power of the tongue, all right? So I have to move myself over to the left side <laughs> the left side of this picture and then also they're saying you know what we need to do is spend time exercising taking time out for ourselves simplifying things delegating we can't do everything all right eating healthy meditating on the word of god you know the bible says in psalm 1 blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but in his, but in he, but he delights himself in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And there's nothing more soothing than meditating on the scripture or to have the Lord send a ram a word to you at a, a at the time that you really need it. That's a blessing. Now, what we need to do too is practice gratitude. Be thankful, you know, be grateful. I've learned to thank God. My uncle used to say, thank God for what it is. You know, we sometimes, you know, the devil deceives us and, you know, we start to think about 
what we don't have, but we got to be grateful for what, for what we do have. So when I get up in the morning, I say, Lord, I thank you for another day. Because some people didn't wake up thinking positive. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. All right. Deep breathing is a good exercise. Time management and being organized. I'm guilty of this. Sometimes I'm stressed out because you know, I didn't do something in a timely way, or I didn't organize myself. You know, they said, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So, you know, many of us, I can't think of the name of that organizer that came out a few years ago, but you know, many of us got that organizer, but now you can use your smartphone. You can, you know, set messages. You can put your calendar in there so that you can be organized. All right, clarify. Uh, establish priorities, set goals, all right? Planning, take regular breaks. This device, can you all see this device? Yeah. The cell phone? Okay, what do you need to do to keep this cell phone working? You have to, you have to charge it, right? Yeah. Yeah, so why do we charge our cell phones and we don't charge ourselves? We don't recharge. You know how bad it is when you are, uh, you're, you know, you're talking to somebody and you said, okay, you got to hurry up because I'm, you know, my phone is about to go out. So we take the time to recharge our phones because we know it is a necessity. It's even more important for us to recharge ourselves. Okay. Now, tip number seven. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We need to challenge our minds. Studies have shown that you can decrease the incidence of Alzheimer's if you challenge your mind. And the way you do that, take a different route home. Every time you take a different route home, you build up a new synapse in your brain. Mm. Do crossword puzzles. Mm -hmm. um, those um i like finding those words you know how they have the words hidden in the puzzles word search thank yeah. you word search yeah what about the ones with the numbers is it the pseudo it starts with the s that one mm -hmm. learn a new task yeah all right learn mm -hmm. a foreign language memorize some scripture all right mm -hmm. so those are the things that you can do to challenge your mind and Studies have shown when you do that, it will decrease the incidence of Alzheimer's disease. And you're not ever too old to, to learn a new hobby or to pick up a new task. Try a new recipe. When you walk, walk a different route. Start a new exercise program. Now, uh, tip number eight, and it goes back to the stress refresh and replenish. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. How many of us actually um, schedule time each day that you don't have any appointments or time for meditation or time to read a scripture or time to pray? Do we wait until, you know, the pastor cause a prayer session? Do, do you actually put it on your schedule as an appointment? You've got to refresh and you've got to replenish. That's great. Now, and the God, the very God of peace sanctify you holy. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless into the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are a tripart being, spirit, soul, and body. Mm -hmm. Our spirit is our God consciousness, all right? Our, our body is our what the world sees, all right? And our soul is our self-consciousness. If any of these is out of whack, then you are not balanced. Paul said, I pray that your whole 
spirit, soul, and body be preserved. If you are not healthy, if you're if you're not if you don't have good health, all right, it is going to affect your spirit and your soul. If your spirit is out of whack, it's going to affect your body and your soul. If your soul is out of whack, it's going to affect your body and your spirit. David said, bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. So they are all interconnected. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be what? In health, even as thy soul prospereth. Speaking about balance. Now, I'd like to introduce the concept of wellness. Wellness means that there is balance. And if you can see on this slide, these are all components of wellness, health, exercise, sleep, a good spiritual life, your occupation, your intellect, your environment, your physical health, all of these contribute to our wellness. Many people are suffering today because of this pandemic. They've lost their jobs, they're on furlough, they don't, they don't have, they don't know um, how they're going to put food on the table. They don't know how they're going to pay the rent. Do you know that since this pandemic, there are so many children who are going hungry. So many children that are going hungry because of this pandemic. Now, wellness is the quality of state of being healthy in body and mind, especially as the result of deliberate effort. So in other words, wellness does just doesn't just come. You have to make an effort. An approach to healthcare that emphasizes preventing illness and prolonging life as opposed to emphasizing treating diseases. So as you know, uh, many of us have insurances that are HMO, health maintenance organizations. And the whole concept is to promote wellness. So you go and get your preventative screenings before something happens. You don't wait until you know the last minute, but wellness is what's um, promoted. Many of our insurers now reward you for wellness. They'll reward you for getting exercise. You get a stipend because you got your cholesterol check. You got your blood sugar check. You exercise. I've, every year I fill out several forms for different uh, patients, insurers, who want to make sure they're well. Now, the WHO's definition of health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. So there is another dimension. Okay, now, then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, command the children of Israel and say to them, when you come into the land of Canaan, this is the land that shall fall to you as an inheritance, the land of Canaan to its boundaries. Now, as you know, when they went into the promised land, each tribe got a piece of land. So each one, each tribe got a piece of land and that land had boundaries. And the point of this is that we need to learn how to establish boundaries. There's a two letter word that starts with N that many uh, times we don't exercise. And what is that word? No. Thank you. <laughs> And I just had this conversation yesterday with someone. <laughs> well, thank God for the confirmation. Yes. <laughs> we need to learn how to say N-O. Yes. <laughs> and when you're single like me, they don't think I have anything to do. Okay. All right. They don't think I have a life, you know. So, so you have to learn, you have to establish boundaries. You can, you, you're, when your plate is overloaded, it's overloaded and you need to know when it's overloaded. You need to know when you're stressed out. Now, the going back, to, I think that slide was a little bit, but anyway, I made my point. But let's talk a little bit more by, about wellness. 
the Alliance Institute for Integrative Medicine, we view wellness as much more than just the state of physical health. And this is just reemphasizing what's already been said. It also encompasses emotional stability, clear thinking, the ability to love, create, embrace change, exercise intuition, and experience a continuing sense of spirituality. That's wellness. It's an active process. As I said before, a deliberate process of becoming aware of and making choices toward a more successful existence. Now, you know, sometimes when you have to have a difficult conversation with someone or someone, someone that's kind of challenging, you need to, you know, before you just, or if you're in the midst of a um, challenging conversation or whatever, Sometimes you have to take a step back. You know, the Bible says a soft answer turneth away wrath. So you got to decide in this particular situation how you're going to react. So you have to be kind of proactive. You know, sometimes um, there are people when you hear their voice on the phone, you know they want something. That's just their nature. All right. So you got to, you know, you just got to. You just have to have a state of balance and emotional stability and not just fly off the handle. Okay, the process is a continuing striving to improve. To be aware means seeking out information to improve health and choices, selecting the best options and success, personal accomplishments. So wellness involves action. You have to choose if you're trying to lose weight to eat that apple as opposed to that piece of apple pie. And I learned, and for me, there's no point in me bringing something in my house because I'm the only one there. So why should I bring a, a whole apple pie that I know that I like in my house and stand there and say, Satan, the Lord God rebuke you. That's not going to work. And I can't bind the calories either, okay? So, so it's best just to avoid it. But I just want you to see this is a process. This is something that we have to, wellness is something that we have to strive to. And, and choices, you know, good food choices, exercise choices. Now, um, another definition, the state of being whole, sound or whole in mind, body or soul, especially the state of being free from physical disease and, and pain, that's health and wellness. Wellness is the conscious development of the whole self. Notice all these definitions, we have to do something. Embarking on a wellness journey is a process of searching for the appropriate tools to make you a healthier and happier human being plus discovering your own effective methods to use these tools for continued growth and development. As there is a great variety in all aspects of life, there's also countless ways to cultivate yourself on an ever-changing path of wellness. Now, as we get older, we have a tendency, if we're not active, to put on weight. So you may, since, you, since we know that, then you may want to develop a plan of regular exercise in order to keep yourself healthy. Now, another definition, and, and just to emphasize the tools. So you need to decide what your tools are. Is it exercise? Is it diet? Is it making, um, you know, dieting? Is it making wiser food choices? What are the tools that you're going to use on this journey of wellness? Is it setting aside time every day for yourself? What, what are the tools that you're going to use? I must say that as women, by nature, we're nurturers. We take care of everybody but ourselves. We put everybody first, our kids, our husbands, you know, our parents. You know, uh, many of us have parents who are aging, so we want to look out for them. We take care of them. Now, these are the eight dimensions of wellness, financial, social, spiritual, occupational, 
physical, intellectual, environmental, and emotional. All of these are dimensions of wellness, social. We were created to be social beings. One thing that's a disadvantage of this pandemic is that we can't hug each other. You know, we can't, um, you know, embrace each other because of the constraints of COVID. Uh, spiritual, expanding our sense of purpose and meaning in life. The Lord, Jeremiah said, I know the plans I have for you. Plans are good and not evil to bring to you an expected end. Occupational. Job satisfaction is also very important. It's miserable to be on a job where you're not satisfied. Physical. We have to eat right. We have to get sleep and, and, and we have to be active. Intellectual, we mentioned earlier about expanding your mind, looking, you know, ways to do to keep your mind active. Environmental, good health by occupying pleasant, stimulating environments that support well being. Emotional, coping effectively with life and creating satisfying relationships. There's nothing more distressing than having um, a broken relationship a relationship that you cherish and now it's broken. It can scar you emotionally. A merry heart does good like a medicine, all right? But a broken spirit dryeth the bones. That's what the Bible says. Now, uh, tip number 10, and the last one is cultivate joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, Rejoice. Now, joy, the thing that I like about joy is the fruit of the spirit, but joy is independent of your circumstances. I could be as poor as Job's turkey, or as my daddy used to say, he said, I can't even afford to buy a mouse a battle jacket with short sleeves. He used to say that all the time. So I can be that poor, but still have joy. We have to learn how to cultivate joy. And joy, like I said, is independent of circumstances. It's not happiness, because happiness is dependent upon, can be dependent upon circumstances. So the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And, and it also says rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. And studies have shown the benefit of gratitude. I spoke about it a little bit earlier, but every day, write down three things that you're grateful for. And you'll find you can't stop with three. You know, that, that hymn, count your blessings, name them one by one, and you'll be surprised at what the Lord has done. So that's a good exercise to write down every day three things that you're grateful for and express gratitude to those who have been a blessing in your life and a blessing to you. Thank them. Now, sleep. We didn't speak that much about sleep, but sleep is also crucial to our state of well-being. And I love this this picture of this little baby, because you know, little babies can sleep. You know, sometimes we say we slept like a baby. Now, this shows, this is some examples of total daily sleep time in mammals. Now I have two cats and they say, um, these cats sleep 12.5 hours. I think my cats sleep 20 hours a day, all right? And you can see how much sleep some animals get and for for men for man it's said that we need to get um between seven and nine hours sleep each night they have eight hours you know eight hours was the classic amount but they're saying maybe even up to nine hours and this is just a another slide to show Purpose, positivity, rest, nutrition, and exercise lead to balance. They lead to 
balance. And my um, audio didn't work, but now if it had worked, I'm sure you're all familiar with um, Hezekiah Walker's song, It's Going to Get Better. And I say that um, for our health, and I say that prophetically for this pandemic that mm -hmm. we're in, that it is going to get better. Mm -hmm. so I think that's I think that's my uh, the last slide. I just want to say, does anybody, if you have a question, you can raise your hand or you can put it in the chat and I can read it. But I know there was, I do want to thank you for this incredible class. I mean, I learned a lot because I am one, I don't, I, if I get four hours of sleep at night, I'm doing good. But I notice if I don't get enough sleep, I feel like I'm in a fog all the time. So you definitely have to get sleep and did, uh, I thought we lost you, but you definitely have to get sleep. You have to eat right. I notice when I eat right and I exercise and I keep my mind stayed on Jesus, I'm not as stressed as I usually am. So those are a couple of things I wanted to talk about, but there are a couple of questions. Um, the first one was um, someone from on Facebook and she wants to know where can she get a mammogram with, I guess this is Henry Ford Health Systems. Yes. H H -F -H -F. HFH, Henry Ford Health System. Yes. Okay. We have mammogram um, capabilities um, throughout the metropolitan area. Uh, Macomb Hospital is part of the Henry Ford Hospital Network. I don't know where she lives, but the uh, main hospital, Fairlane and Dearborn, uh, you can get a mammogram. Um so we have, you know, many, many mammogram sites. So she could call. Where does she, does she, did she say where she lived? It okay. She was on okay. Because if, because yeah. um, if she's close to, I'm sure there's a Ford facility in her geographic area. Okay. One of the questions, um, another question was, um, why do you think that so many African-Americans are lactose intolerant? Now, I don't know of any uh, genetic information, but, um, and I don't know what the statistics are. And sometimes the lactose intolerance um, is, it comes with age. All mm -hmm. right. It may not be something from birth. And I really haven't done a lot of, uh, you know, research on it. I don't know if there's some sort of a gene defect. I'd have to, you know, really research that. But I find now that I'm older, um, I can't drink, you know, milk. I've switched over to almond milk and I, I notice um, I can still eat cheese, but sometimes when I eat dairy products, you know, I get bloated or whatever. So, but there's so many alternatives. There's almond milk, there's um, cashew milk, you know, there's coconut milk, there's oat milk. So when I make smoothies, you know, I use the almond milk now. Okay. And that question was from me because I know I became lactose intolerant when I was pregnant for my youngest daughter and I was only 28. Uh huh. So I was really, I felt as though I was really young, but then she came out lactose intolerant. Okay. As a baby, she ended up being lactose intolerant. So I was just trying to figure out like where to, you know, how did that come about? Even for her, I guess it was genetic for her uh -huh. because I was already exposed to it, but so I'll, have to do more, I I'll have to do more research on that. But for a lot of people, it's, it's acquired, you know, like yours mm -hmm. occurred at age 28. And, you know, some people, um, it occurs even later than that. Mm -hmm. So, Okay. Does anyone else have any questions? Uh, I do have one question. Um, so I was listening on FB at first or Facebook at first, but um, in terms of BMI, you know, there are people who question the accuracy of those numbers. So I'm just wondering what your take is on that. Like if, if I'm five foot, like your example, but I'm 130 pounds and muscular, you know, according to the BMI, technically, you know, I would be, my BMI would be high. So I guess, what do you say about like accuracy? Well, now, if you're a muscular person, you're going to have a higher BMI because athletes will have a higher BMI because they are muscular. So the BMIs are guidelines. They're guidelines that have been established, but it will change if you have a muscular frame. So now the BMI, the reason why they say um, 
30 and above is considered to be obese. That's just, you know, based on scientific data. And the fact that if you are obese, there are, you have greater mortality or morbidity, I should say, from certain illnesses. Like the obesity is associated with diabetes. It can be associated with high blood pressure, can be associated with heart disease or inactivity. So, you know, you're right. If you're muscular, the BMI may not be totally accurate. But most of us know, though, when we're overweight. So we don't need a BMI to tell us that. <laughs> so... I think Miss Pat was the next had the um, next question, and then we'll go to Cheryl and then Sandra. Okay, I I had a comment, not necessarily a question, but I had a comment. And when you were talking about the uh, the exercising and things we could do, and some benefits of some of the uh, the uh, healthcare uh, healthcare insurances and whatever, I just wanted to put out there for some of the as we get older and for those of us who might be involved with the HMOs and so on, they have a program called Silver Sneakers, which is a program that gives you total access to any health facility, uh, gyms, LA Fitness, the YMCA. Wow. You can use all the equipment. You can join the, the uh, group exercise programs and whatever. So that's just once you become a certain age, and you're you're eligible for mm -hmm. silver sneakers, and it's all part of the health maintenance mm -hmm. uh, organization to keep you healthy. And then the one more thing I'll just throw out there is that I've I've been what 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 I call a, a pescatarian for twelve years now, mm -hmm. and I don't miss meat. I haven't had the desire for meat. I do seafood, mm -hmm. and I just want to tell people just be aware be aware of too much meat in your system, especially beef, especially beef. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. I'm so glad you the mentioned that meat, yeah. about mm -hmm. the um, silver slippers because uh, some of my older patients are in that program and you're right. See, the insurance companies, they, they want you to exercise. They want you to be healthy so that they don't have to pay for you when you get sick. All right. <laughs> I'm just teasing, but they want <laughs> you to be healthy. Okay, Shirley. Um, hi, Dr. Uh, Robert. Um, I have a question um, dealing with female issues as far as having cysts that comes on your ovaries and when it um, rupture. Could you tell me the reasoning for the cysting or is it something genetic or um, um, I, I'm dealing with someone right now that's dealing with that and, it's their, and they're young, they're young lady. So I want to know more about it because I am concerned about the cyst being on that ovary area and then it ruptured. Okay, now does, <clears throat> does a person have a single ovarian cyst or do they have multiple cysts? Because there's a medical condition called polycystic ovaries, PCOS, polycystic ovary syndrome, in which the um, ovary is, no, is replaced by multiple cysts. But now ovarian cysts can occur actually at any age and the cysts sometimes do rupture. Sometimes the cysts are intact. You know, they don't cause any problems and sometimes they expand and get bigger. They can cause pain. And then on occasion they can rupture. Now, if they rupture, it may require, you know, surgical intervention. But now what makes, um, you know, someone... Uh, more likely to cause, you know, form a cyst as to another, you know, I'm not sure, but um, they can occur. And usually there, you know, if it's not causing any problems, then the, you know, women's health doctor will, will watch them. But if they get too big, like I said, sometimes they have to intervene, you know, surgically. Okay. Thank you. Uh-huh. Sandra, you have a question? Mm, no, I don't have any questions, but you know, I've been going to the doctor a lot lately, COVID survivors, so a lot of things that was discussed have already been brought to my attention, but I'm very thankful for the information. It was great. It was really, really good. We are just so grateful that you um, came to share with us tonight. Um, one, the, Another point that you talked about was being grateful. And Carly actually does a post on this, just um, what, what happened to you good this week? 
-hmm. you know, we focus on the positive. Mm -hmm. I think that does, mm -hmm. um, we, it does take away a lot of the stress in our lives because we think more on the positive than the negative. So, I mean, that, that was a really good point that you brought out also. But it's just an outstanding class all together. And we're just so grateful for you tonight. We really are. You know, all the great information that you gave. I don't think we have any more questions, but we are just really grateful. Um, the women of the worship center, I'm not sure who all is on watching us on Facebook, but I am just so grateful that all of you guys were able to join in also tonight because I think it was just a phenomenal teaching that you gave us tonight. Well, I'm so grateful for the opportunity, you know, for the invitation. Uh, Sister Linda was on. Oh, she's. Yeah, she's still on. McGee. Oh, okay. She was the one that extended the, uh, you know, invitation. So I thank Sister Linda and I thank um, Bishop Brailsforth for the invitation and I thank you. And, um, and I pray, you know, you were blessed and I pray, yes. you, were, you know, you know, edify. And let me just say one thing, my soapbox, please encourage everybody you know, if you've prayed over it, please get your COVID shot. Please, please, please tell your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, because they are the ones now who are being infected with COVID. So, yeah, they are. so, so, um, you know, I encourage you to encourage them to get their COVID shot. Amen. And we just pray that the Lord continues to bless you, continue to use you, because we just love how you incorporated the word of God into your teaching tonight. Yes. So we just really want to thank you tonight. Thank you. And God bless you all. God bless you. All right. Thank you, Dr. You. Robinson. That was amazing. Thank Good night, you. guys. Good night. Good night. Enjoy. Good night, thank you. Good night. Good night, Good night guys.